This playthrough is rated M for Mature. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Follow my back here with another episode of Our World Has Ended. In the last episode, well, we found a way to uh, somehow escape this place. Um, however, well, the VR world or AR world or whatever, due to some uh, convenient things, uh, well, a girl A being there and all this other stuff. But now we can't leave because the bomb inside, but it looks like a uh, Warisan has a plan. He's going to go inside, unlock it. And hopefully we'll get out, but will he be able to do it fast enough to get out himself? Let's find out. Yeah, Warisan, we'll be waiting for you. He lowers his hand and puts on the NWG. Hmm. Or he's dead, whatever. I mean, <laughs> all these people are terrible people anyway. All right, let's meet in the real world again. Change the world. Change the world, though. Hmm. A warrior son dives into the virtual world. We have about two minutes left. The clock is ticking. I'm surprised you guys aren't trying to find out where the bomb is or whatever. It is. I mean, probably one of those things that's like inside one of the walls or something like that. We trust a warrior son to wait for him to lock the door. <laughs> Get the keys and unlock the door. No. The tense silence of the cafe makes it hard to breathe. Time seems to pass by both quickly and slowly. So Unable to bear the heavy atmosphere, a Tatiana worry, uh, worriedly looks at a Wari san hey, It's fine. He'll be back. We won't lose any, anything against any adversity. Thing. That just can't happen. That's what kind of man our representative is. It looks like a Rook san's talking to himself rather than us. All that we can do here is wait for the door to open and rush out. Suddenly, got a message on my phone. Feeling uneasy. Take it out. Wait, oh, well, I guess he could be able to send messages in the virtual world, wouldn't he? The one, the one who sent it is a Warisan. Everyone, Warisan sent me a message. So, okay. Why not send everyone else a message? Nah, whatever. Everyone gathers around me, looks at the content. Don't take off my goggles, even if the door is open. What? Why can't we remove his goggles? We all become puzzled, and a moment later, I get a follow up. I'm fine. Go on ahead. Wait, why is he sending something like that? Sakai, so, are you really fine? Maybe you ran into some kind of problem with Akashic? Hmm. I have a bad feeling about this. You can easily uh, awaken from a new world experience by having your goggles removed and cutting the line. When the door is open, it should be possible for us to remove his goggles and escape together. Well, can't you just drag his body with him? You know, you know, couldn't you not have to remove the goggles, just take his body? Like, wouldn't that work, or would that wake him up by moving the body? However, he told us not to do that, and come to think of it, he actually sent a message from the virtual world. Just what's going on there? Can we really go back safely? We have no choice but to leave him. I don't know what's going on in the virtual world, but he said that we'll meet in the real world again. He'll surely come back to us alive. Rukasan tries to calm everyone down. Yeah, that's true. Sakai-san will surely be fine. He'll come back right after we escape. We stand before the door again and wait for him to lock the door. One minute left. The door still isn't opening, but there's still time. All we can do is wait. Half a minute left. The tenseness is making my heart race, but I'm sure that the san will do it. 20 seconds left. The door still isn't opening. Where isn't... Uh, we're all going to die. A Warisan. A Warisan. A Warisan. I silently plead over and over and over and look at the door. Suddenly, there's a mechanical click. The lock is undone. The automatic door opens. Let's go. We all escape the cafe. We all run out and distance ourselves so we can get not caught in the explosion. Less than 10 seconds. Wait, you are not out? Rukasan he heads to the building. Rukasan, it's dangerous. I quickly grab his arm and stop him. Okay, don't wait. I just can't watch him die. He tries to shake me off, but I can't allow myself t uh, to let him go. Or to let go. Amari will be fine, right? He'll come out any moment, right? Sky son, hurry. What's, t what's taking that perfect so long? Stop wasting time and just come out already. What's the time? Hurry, hurry. Tatiana cries while looking at the display on her PC. Or PC. However, the time reaches zero, and... Oh, nothing happened. Whew. I mean, wah! The building explodes. Holy shit! <laughs> An ear-tearing sound. A mighty wind. A broken wall. Scattered rubble. Heart breathing. Heart aching. Or uh, whatever. Uh, never mind. Some of the plates from the cafe reach even us, who were a short distance away from the building. No, no way. Sakai, what are you doing? Don't be like that, man. Show yourself. 
No! No, sky -san. We stare at the destroyed building with dull shock on our faces, but a warrior sun doesn't appear. After a while, just standing there, we finally notice all the commo or we finally notice all the commotion around us. Let's go. Natsumi san speaks like it's painful for her to talk. Her voice is shaking. Natsumi, Natsumi what are you even saying? The war is still there. We can't just leave him. Won't the police be alerted because of that loud explosion? Asana san glares at Natsumi san like she can't believe what she's saying. I understand that sentiment. I can't understand why she say that in, a time in this situation. I hear the sound of sirens approaching. The firemen, ambulance, and police are about to arrive. Let's go. We can't do anything if we stay here. And we'll probably get put uh, get held for questioning at, at least, if not if anything. Natsumi san speaks again. That's not true. We can go help Hawaii. We can't. We just can't. I mean, look at this. She's holding Warisan's NWG. It's all broken. This came flying all the way here. No. No way, no way, no way, no way, no way. Yeah, there's no way Sakai would die to an explosion like that. <laughs> I know you're there, man. Hurry up, man. Haruka, Sano, get a grip. Still looking away, Natsumi-san shouts at them as to pull herself together. As if to pull herself together. Exclamation point. Dot, dot, dot. Whenever you're kind of here, we, we... She can't find the words. The hands holding the NWG are shaking. Yeah, you're right. Let's go. I'm sure he's fine. Yeah. Sakai. Tanya, don't worry. It's all okay. Let's go, Natsumi-san. Okay. I'm worried about a Warisan, but there's nothing we can do if we stay here. A Warisan gathers his courage and dove into the virtual world for our sake, and now we have to keep moving for his. Careful not to get caught in the crowds, we hurry back to the office. Hmm. Is he dead? Or is he playing a bit of a possum here? Who knows? Judgment 7 Office Lounge, August 13, 2017, Sunday, 9.07 p.m. I have no idea how much time has passed since we returned. Before I knew it, the sun had risen, and then fallen once more. Everyone contacted Awari-san and were holding our phones, waiting for a response, which never came. Or it comes. Uh, whoops, I pressed the button too early. In a stupor, I look at the TV. On the next news, there was an explosion at the Kabaruga building in to Tokyo's Taito Ward, Asakusa. I am not changing my newscaster voice. The police are currently investigating the cause, but the damage is severe, making it extremely difficult to... The TV shows the Bologna Cafe exit. It's off limits to the public and there's a line around it. Seeing the ruins reminds me of Awari-san's face as he dove to the New World to save us. We just saw it like five seconds ago. We don't have to flashback. Ah! Hey now, who do you think I am? If Sakai Awari says he can do it, he can. If I say it's all right, that's definitely all right. And if I say I'll save y'all, that means that you'll be saved. Don't worry, and just wait to, uh, for the door to open. When it is, just leave this building. I'll log out and join you guys right after. This is in order, by the way. Huh? I'm just asking you to do that for me. All right. Yeah, well, we just had the... Oh, okay. For some people, it might be the next day, but for me, it's like five seconds ago. I'm like, come on. We don't need a flashback. That just happened. A wire sign's in WG is on the lounge table. It's broken in places. There are cut cords and cracks all over it. It tells you everything you need to know about just how strong the explosion was. It makes you assume that a wire sign died. Now, you'd be surprised how often people can survive certain events or explosions due to, like, placement or just random events occurring like back to back you know I, hell someone could survive a, a jump off of like a hundred story building if they fall right you know i mean there's no way he could have survived an explosion this i have no words or rather i'm too scared to say anything saying it would mean acknowledging it watching the news starts giving me pain and i reach for the remote to change the channel but suddenly the image from oslocusa switched to the studio we just received some important news. Tokyo skyscrapers are apparently lighting up in a strange way. We're connected with Yamada son who's currently on the scene. Hello, Yamada here. Do you, do you see the skyscraper over there? Over? They show a building, but there's nothing strange about it. Um, we don't see anything strange from here in the studio. What do you see from the scene? 
The lights in the skyscraper are not far from the studio are flicking on and off. From here, it looks like the lights are showing the alphabetical letters J and K. That's said to be happening on various skyscrapers all over the city. We don't know the cause, but we'll be sure to keep you updated when we receive new information. The, sky the skyscraper light hijacking. Aruka-san whispers that like he's delirious. This is another part of the Judgment Knight's capital disappearance operation that he thought up. It's based on an augmented reality augmentation, so it can't be seen on TV. Yesterday's sky tree flickering made it obvious that the operation had moved forward, and this just solidified that. It feels like the virtual it feels like the virtual is starting to encroach on the real. When you die in the game, you die for reals. However, I can't bring myself to care anymore. Even if the Jake Hansen affects society, we don't feel like it's any of our business. Hmm. Oh well. Chapter 13 in, the beginning of chapter 14. Our world has prayed. Nocturnus Cantus! Looks like we're getting into some... Looks like, uh... What is it? We're getting into... Uh, when we hit 90, 80, 88 miles per hour, we're gonna see some serious shit. There's gotta be... like I feel like... If, I, like I said before, I feel like 16 is gonna be the magic number here. I could be wrong, but I feel like we're getting... Like, we're getting we're getting there. Like, a couple chapters to go or something like that. The day goes by without us doing anything. The instant, game development, we couldn't focus on anything at all. We just lazily wasted time in the lounge. As time usually drifts by, clock, the clock strikes midnight and the TV starts going haywire. A strangely cheerful music starts playing and it starts showing Tokyo Goodbye, a weird anime with its distasteful title. It has, the JK, it has JK as a sponsor. Tokyo Goodbye is the third part of the Judgment Knight's plot to eradicate Tokyo. Huh. It shows vile-looking cartoony characters presenting what will happen in a ca highly casual manner. It's surreal and actually kind of disgusting. That's me, isn't it? Natsumi-san mutters. There's so little emotion in her voice that he thinks she's not feeling anything. The characters are based on us, Judgment 7. And of course, one of them is Awari-san. I assume the guy in the chair. Oh yeah, the other would be Natsumi, yeah. Okay. Seeing that character instantly made us think about him, even if we didn't want to. The lazy, always grinning, perverted guy who can constantly freaks out, all, freaks out all the girls working here. He has programming skills that are uh, just as perverted as himself, and he could make it through any trouble he ran into. He's like our leader. He always placed our well-being before anything else. With him gone, we realized just how larger than life he truly was. Oh, there's the rest of them. Oh. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's kind of a funny picture, man, because of the Yudo with the ridiculously... Well, okay, not ridiculous, but huge boobs. I don't know why, I just find that funny. Uh, let's see, missiles, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, Ruka being uh, severely rotund and all that. That's kind of a funny picture. Oops, I didn't even read that previous part. Sorry about that. Ballistic missiles destroy the city. We're enjoy jumping for joy. The anime ends. The ED is just as cheerful as the OP, and after a bit of static, it goes back to the regular broadcasting if nothing happened. It's almost like they're going to blame us for it or something like that. What are we even doing now? No, why, are we, why are we doing anything? What would he say if he just kept, kept sitting around and doing nothing? Would he really prove it? Would he really be proud of us? We're all apathetic, and Asasan may as well be talking to herself. I know that we're all here and we did all, all the same stuff we did because of him. But kind of think of it, we never decided, acted, or thought anything by ourselves. Did we really do nothing without him? Mm. Sakai-san was always protecting us after all. He spoiled and treasured us all the time. We forgot how special that is. Every day was fun and exciting because it gave us a place we felt we belonged to. And we always thought that these days would go on forever. We were relying on him so much that we ended up unable to walk by ourselves. Kind of like the closed fist idea from Jade Empire. <laughs> oh, wish I was playing that right now. Unison sighs dejectedly. We never once won against the Clay, and I never won win any against him, no. I know that I'm not good enough to replace him, but even so, I hate that I haven't won against him. And that's why I don't want to run away. I mean, if I do, he'll just laugh at me again. Tatiana's holding back her tears. Holding back the tears. Holding back the tears. I've had enough. It's too much for me. Sakai, my best friend is dead. I can't recover from that. I can't fight anymore. I don't want to do anything. But even so, I'm not running away. And I don't know why. What do we do? What should we do? Please tell me, Sakai. Ibuka-san takes Awari-san's broken energy and shouts. 
I hate to admit it, but without that perv, Judgment 7 has no reason to exist. It will collapse sooner or later at this rate. I don't want to admit that. I can't accept that. I never will. Tsumi san clenches her teeth. Her eyes are full of motivation against. You mean determination? No. <laughs> Yes, warrior son is gone. However, we're still here. That's why we have to do what we can for Wari and for ourselves. We still haven't done what we must. Her son with determination makes us all look up at her. What do you intend to do? We'll face Lab 13. That's all we can do. And all that we must do. Hey everyone, it's judgment time! Um, uh, this isn't Power Rangers, dude. Natsumi-san is tearful, yet full of power. Full of raging power, huh? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go. Where? How? Uh, yeah! Or yes. We all nod with hesitation. Well, do you have a plan? And so we prepare to face... Loop. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell like that. We prepare to face Lab 13. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I yelled. I don't know what it actually feels like on the mic, because I don't check it until after the fact, but... Anyway. Uh, Judgment 7 Office Conference Space, August 14, 2017, Monday. 56... or 1256... I think. We moved to the meeting space to discuss what to do about Lab 13. Do we even have a way to stop Lab 13? Yeah, just get some... Don't you have guns and shit? <laughs> to stop their cyber terror plot, we have to completely destroy Akashic? Akashic is sending virtual images directly to the visual cortexes of the people in Tokyo. It's all just augmented reality. That's why it should be solved if we destroy both the program and the server responsible. But Akashic is in Rocket North, right? How do we even destroy that? I didn't, I didn't even know it was there. I never saw it anywhere in the research facility. Also, even if I did, I can more security too tight. We can't just go and destroy it. I, I know that much. I'm not saying that we should destroy it physically. It's possible unless we bring an army or something. Not to, not to mention that getting the money to go all the way to Hokkaido would be difficult. I wonder what Miyabi and the others are doing about the, the situation. Judge 7 isn't the richest company, to put it lightly. Oh yeah, with Awari gone, we don't really have an extra backup for finances, do we? Uh-oh. That's gonna suck. But that's why we have to fight the only way we can. I instantly understand what she means. We're going to the new world? Yeah, we'll dive into the new world and destroy the Kashuk server from the inside. I was bound to stop the cyber-terrorism terror plot, but we don't have a link place, though. But Natsumi Sensei, is it really possible to destroy from within the new world? It might be difficult for us, but it shouldn't be impossible to cooperate with someone. Who? With someone, do you mean? Yeah, Ichire. Oh, she's a girl away now. You saw you saw what happened the last time we were in the New World, right? We could do nothing about the exit building, but she went in with an apartment. Mm. Yeah, the wall passing shield. That was something. During the trip, Ichire said that her ministry powers were lowered to rank E. But, but girl A on the other hand, I feel like she might have hidden powers that suppress the system itself. Hidden powers? How about a hidden program? Don't add, like, the fantasy into the fiction here. <laughs> or, I mean, it's fiction. You know what I mean. Don't add, don't add fantasy into the sci-fi, dude. Even though, depending on the sci-fi you read, sometimes magic and technology becomes the same thing. But Girl A has hidden powers? Ugh. Shouldn't she say I have hidden programs or... Uh, whatever. Yeah, remember how when she led us in the cafe exit, there was the escape port? It wasn't there when we went there ourselves, so I think that she was the one who created it. That's why I think that, with her help, we might be able to destroy the Kashuk server. That does seem possible. During the trip, Ichiwe could use her Rinky powers to influence her own memory data in order to use data to over it, right? That means that Rinky's memory data wasn't all that important until the 13th. That's why we should control it even at Rinky. But the girl ate the personality data is something that both me and Kuchi did everything they could to get, right? That means that Rinky's virtual personality data is actually really important to the 13th. It's likely that our virtual personality is totally connected to the Akashic system itself. Natsumi san and Tatiana's words are just hypotheses, but I don't feel like they're far off the mark. So we have to save Achan, Reina san, even if she doesn't have her memories. Reina san is Reina san. I don't want her. I, I want to help her this time. I'll do everything for that. Yuna san nods, all fired up. Yeah, ever, ever since her Haruna or Haruna or whatever incident, she's. She's been more, a bit more serious at the time. Everyone, everyone, everyone else wants to help Rainasan too, even if she's just a virtual personality, which is dumb. That ju that means that we'll dive into the new world, find girl and save her, then use her hip powers to destroy Akashic. Oh, and then we'll just, uh, and then after that we'll have a beer and just wait till this all blows over, right? That's the plan, right? That's simple enough. We just go in and help the damsel in distress and destroy the enemy base. That's so simple, I like it. 
I'm not sure if I'd, it'll go that smoothly, but it's definitely worth trying. But then I, but then I know it's a huge hole in the plan. Wait, I understand the plan, but there's one problem. How will we get to the new world? Tatiana's PC in Riken North is broken, and we can't use Cafe Exit's line either, right? You're such a dummy. It's weird that you didn't, didn't know such a simple solution. Eh? Simple solution? Or simple way? We just have to connect to Judgment 7 server to the Akashic server directly, and activate the group program inside the Akashic. It's pretty bold. We've been using the PCs as proxies until now, but she wants to do it directly. Huh. Um, I don't know much about computers, but isn't that really hard? I mean, there's security, right? I share your opinion. This is the Akashic we're talking about. It's probably protected by some extremely hot, tough security. It's impossible to connect it to unless you take care of that. Heck it! She looks dead serious. And dead. <laughs> you! I'm, I'm a genius. I think your security is nothing to me. Also, Papa is being bad. I hate to stop him. No, I... No, stop him. She puffs her flat chest. Well, there it is. Her eyes are full of determination. There you go. Need some Undertale up in this bitch. Despite the fact that she now... Uh, no... Now knows of Yuri San's involvement in Akashic and the capital disappearance operation, she's still resolved to do it. There's no doubt that Yuri San being behind it came as a shock to her. And yet she's still facing forward instead of looking away. And I find that really admirable. So I recognize Tatiana's abilities. Let's just trust her on this one. Yeah, the rest of us don't know much about programming after all. Let's bet Tatiana. Yeah, it's like it's not like without her we basically be fucked. I believe, I believe in her too. Tatiana's the only current judge seven member could do this. Tatiana, we're doing this to you. You're only a hope. Uh, and also Star Wars. I'd rather be watching that. Thanks, everyone. Leave it to me. I really want a sister, but the rest of us know nothing about programs, so we're going to only leave it all to her. We'll just give her chocolate chocolate bars or gaiju gaiju cans, and you'll be fine. Tatiana, if there's anything I can do to help, just say it. I'll give my all to support you. Then I'll have you be my assistant. Look after me. Give me chocolate bars. That's pretty much exactly what I do as your attendant. Then again, I guess all I can really do here is keep her in the top form as she works. I'll gladly accept being her assistant. In the meantime, I'll go repair Sakai's NWG. It doesn't feel right to leave it broken. Rukasan. He's not with us, but he's still part of Judgment 7. He'll be fighting Lab 13 too, so his gear must be in the best state. He looks at the NWG he brought here all the way from the lounge. He lost his best friend, so he has to it has to be hurt far more than the rest of us. Despite that, he's doing his best to look at it and fight. We then go to talk about what we should do. This is the first time Judgment 7 is doing something like the water song. We need to keep moving while we adjust to the change. We give our all into doing every, anything we can. Do we give our all into anything we can? Is the water song really a, a given the ghost? Find out next time in the next episode of Our World Has Ended. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.